Alright guys, I'm back. Um, I had the settings on wrong. I'm such an idiot. I do sincerely apologise. Um, I couldn't help that then. I had to stop the stream to sort it out. Um, there was no way of sorting it out. I feel such an idiot right now. I'm so sorry. It's, not, it's still lagging. I, d I can't help the lag, guys. I don't really know what to say. Is that better? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Uh, right. Back to the story. Uh, right, where were we? I also got a membership to watch Arsenal football matches and started trying to get out more. I started taking our pet dog out with the family and really enjoyed the fresh air. This was something I had missed. I was lucky to have an indoor slash outdoor wheelchair so I could get out on paths but found it difficult off-road. I then found an all-terrain wheelchair on the internet and now I'm able to go anywhere I want and in any weather, which is great. While at an Arsenal match, I saw someone go past me in a wheelchair with an assistance dog. I did some research and came across Canine Partners. At first, I thought it was, I was too disabled to have a dog. The more I started thinking about it, the more I wanted to at least apply and see what happened. I started looking through Canine Partners website again and was reading about someone who has an assistance dog. I realised he had a spinal cord injury and our level of dis disability was roughly the same. After getting all relevant paperwork together and sending it off, I had a phone call about an assist assessment day. It was a great day. I got to work with lots of different dogs and could tell instantly I'd benefit from having one. Around 18 months later, I met Ralph. As soon as he saw me, he came straight over and licked my face. There was an instant connection and I knew he was the dog for me. He stood beside me and I could stroke him and stayed there for the rest of the afternoon. I fe a few weeks later, I went for a two-week training course. I was really excited to see Ralph again. And he seemed just excited to see me. The training course was very tiring and at times hard work. But it was all fun and the more we were practicing tasks together, the more exciting I was about my future with Ralph. When we got home after the course, I let Ralph have a look around. Once he settled down in the garden with a toy, we let our pet dog say hello. The immediate, the, he immediately played and got on well. Ralph and I practiced tasks on daily basis. <laughs> and he has already made an, in, an immediate impact on my life. He presses an alarm that calls the carer if I need to help him. I can't call them myself. He picks them up. He picks things up and gives them to me, like my phone and finger splint. He takes my jacket off and my gloves in the winter, and he helps remove my blankets if I get too hot at night. He also opens and closes door for me on a daily basis. And he sometimes presses the controller to my electronic assistive te technology for me. Turning on and off lights, fans and heaters and my TV and also helping me phone people if I need to. He's also been practicing pressing the buttons on at traffic lights. Having Ralph by my side, he's not only made me more independent, he has made me a lot healthier. Since having Ralph, I'm no longer anxious or in and out of hospital constantly. I don't know if it's the fresh air I'm getting or the fact I now have a purpose in life and someone else to worry about. I can be at home on my own and I take Ralph out for a long walk on my every day, on my own every day. I also, I, I can't even speak, I enjoy every second of it. Being able to be on my own is quite a big thing for me. For the last four years, four or five years, I haven't been able to be on my own even for a 10 minute wander around the block due to ill health or the fact that I've dropped something I can't pick up. Ralph is also great fun to have around and he keeps me motivated. He also makes me laugh a lot as he can be quite cheeky. He sometimes brings me the house phone or remote control even if I don't need them just so he can get a treat. In just a few weeks I will be moving out of my parents house and into a specially adapted flat. This is to give me more independence and start a new chapter in my life as I'm now 25 years old. If I didn't have Ralph, think I would be very nervous and not looking forward to it. But he gives me the confidence to, I need to know that I'll be fine on my own. So guys, that was Paul um, from Hertfordshire. That was his canine partner sto story. And I've just realised you can't see the, uh, the 
the, the stories. So I'll just uh, move my camera over slightly. There we go. This is Paul, and that's his dog, Ralph. Um, I'm going to read one more story. So if I go back a page... And this next lady, Sally, um, we actually had our partnership day together. Uh, don't know how long that was now. But, yeah, she managed to... I've been looking for her everywhere on Facebook since I've had my partnership. And I feel like... I feel like I've got my friend back because we got on so well. Uh, during the during the partnership, uh, that I'm now going to read out, read out her story. Um, meet Sally from East Sussex. Sally has lupus and e hell. I'm so sorry, Sally. I cannot read that. Ella's Danlos. She was partnered with canine partner Ethan in 2013. Now I might cry at this one because this is quite a sad, a sad story. I read this earlier. Um, and, and, it's, and it's quite sad. Let me just sit forward. I hope the lag's fixed now, guys. And you're not experiencing any issues. If you do, just let me know in the comments. And I'll, I'll try and fix it. Uh, up until the age of 17, my life was pretty much as near as a fairy tale as you could imagine. I had a fantastic family life. Fantastic friends. I, ex I was excelling academy and in an extracurriculum activities. And was looking forward to promising career as a doctor it all changed in the easter of my a-level year when i was struck down by a mysterious virus from which i never recovered it was at the point in my life that i had no idea that things were going to get worse and how much worse they could get i went from being able to run around ski play netball for the school dance sing do drama study for a-levels and much more to a person who was just exhausted by walking then became unable to walk for any length of time, leaving the house was too much. So I mainly was at home all the time, on the sofa or my bed getting up to go, only getting up to go to the toilet. Later I was diagnosed with lupus and now with Ella's Danlos. I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing that properly. Uh, as well as many accompanying autoimmune and connective tissue conditions. So what did I do? I just cracked on the way I have also always dealt with life. Now that that's we had a conversation about that. Um, I get on with my life, and she doesn't let anyone. I don't let anyone stop me doing what I want to do, and she doesn't either. So I think that's why we got on. Um, I pushed and pushed as hard as I could and achieved the highest grades. Although it turned out this doesn't necessarily work for your health. In 2013, I was admitted into intensive care for uncontrollable seizures. Uh, was on a breath breathing tube and was in hospital for about 2.5 months trying to break the cycle of these seizures. I have been in a wheelchair ever since, but my life has steadily improved. The length of time I can sit up with my legs down has increased and the length of time I have to lie horizontally has decreased. My life is very different to the pre-2005 and to that of some someone of my age, 29. Despite the doctor's maltreatments of me, Despite misdiagnosis, despite the loss of so many things in my life, including my studies, my career, my dreams, I wanted to be a doctor abroad delivering babies. Certain members of my family, some friends, a boyfriend, my body, my appearance, my appearance, my clothes and much more. I will manage to maintain hope. I found out about canine partners quite a few years ago, but I actually applied. Before I actually applied, one of my cousins works in London and saw them and at an event, so suggested I look into further look into it further, especially as I have been an animal lover. However, in between filling in my application form and actually being assessed for a canine partner, I was just I what just wasn't well enough to pursue it, so I a couple of years went by. When I was well enough to get assessed and passed the application progress process, I was buzzing. Then when I actually got the call to say I had been potentially matched with a dog. I was desperate to know its name, breed, sex, colour, etc. Um, so I was just reading a comment about the lag. Uh, where are we? Where, 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 where am I? Where am I? 
I've lost. Uh. Oh, when I was well enough to get assessed and pass the application progress process, I was buzzing. Then when I actually got to co the call to say I'd been partially matched with a dog, I was desperate to know its name, breed, sex, colour, etc. It really felt like a blind date. When I oh she actually said that to my face, which was quite funny. Uh, when I met Ethan for the first time, we had a blast. Then we all sat down to discuss if he was suitably matched and whether training could go ahead. For the first time in my life, I was actually sensible. And I realised that a two-week residential training course wasn't something I really want, wasn't up to. Despite having the absolute gorgeous dog in front of me, I managed to try not to get too attached to him and too excited so I could go home and have a serious discussion with myself, my family and my carers. Totally unlike me. I think I sensed what a momentous and also incredibly responsible and energy-consumed task having a canine partner would be. I then received a call from Canine Partners team asking me what I was thinking. Miraculously, before I could say that, my stamina and health wouldn't allow me to do, to do the residential. They said they could come up for a solution. Trainers Els and Claire had figured out that they could dedicate more time with me over the first week of the residential. I would then go home for a week while the others on the course completed it. Then the training would come up and do a second week. The trainer would come up and do the second week with me at home. I couldn't believe my luck, and I truly felt like a, it truly felt like a miracle. Ethan and I were going to be partners. I burst into tears, squealed, and jumped around on the sofa in the realization that my new partner for life was Ethan. I found the week of my tra uh, site training really hard. It wasn't that Els or Claire were fantastic. It was just that my body let me down and is weak. Uh, we realized after the first day that I wouldn't be able to keep up with the, with the schedule. So they adapted it for me and I managed to do some training each day for the whole week. Scroll up a bit. Ethan stayed behind me until the trainers could bring him up. And when I knew he was arriving, I felt like my true love was coming home. It was another tough week and I didn't realize it would take so much out of me.